Alrighty, today we're going to show you how to use SheCam and basically nest your files so that you could do a full sheet um, and then also we're going to touch on importing other parts into the same file. So if you want to cut different, um, multiple different objects on one sheet of steel, uh, you can you can do that fairly easy. So let's open SheCam. If you notice here, I have the file from a previous uh, tutorial that we did about creating toolpaths. So once you have your toolpath created, we're just going to use this for the sake of time because it's a very simple concept to um, to nest your files. So let's scroll. Uh, up here, if you scroll over these icons here, there you notice there's this four-way cross. If you hover over it, it says nesting. Now, once you select that, this is our nesting icon. So we got to be selected in that to nest files. And if you notice, after you're selected, all of this stuff over here under your operations becomes um, not usable. So you can't edit operations when you're in the nesting mode. So that's just a heads up if you're sitting there uh, in your nesting mode and you go to try to edit your operations before you get out of nesting mode you might sit here and say what's going on I don't know how to how to go and edit my operations now and the software's messing up on me and so just be patient with it when you're first getting used to the software um, take it uh, step by step and if you got any troubles hopefully these videos will help you out guide you through the process a little more smoothly so um, to get back to it you can click on this arrow uh, you could click on contours most of these other ones I think starting yeah most of these you can you can access your operations and everything else well selected um, nesting I believe is one of the only ones that doesn't allow you to to mess around with your operations when you're selected so we're in nesting now um, we're gonna go ahead and right click on our uh, material here or our our cutting area and it will scroll down to array parts if we select array parts what we notice here is we have number of columns and number of rows now if this we're probably not going to be able to well first off and if, if and most people probably know this but if they don't our columns are going to run top to bottom and our rows are going to run left to right so if you notice this figure I have here is fairly big so if I tried to get more than one um, more than one column out of it I probably wouldn't be able to so I'm gonna go ahead and let's we can this is cool too we can actually click fit to material and see how many we can get out of the sheet and if you notice um, our column will probably drop to a one and our rows will get a few of them here. So let's click fit to material. Yep, see, so our columns went to one because we can only have one column of this file because it's so large um, on a four foot by eight foot sheet. And the number of rows, we get seven. So that means we could cut seven of these triumph signs out of a full four foot by eight foot sheet of steel. Um, another thing to keep in mind, that's actually not our exact amount that we can cut. Um, the reason why is because this would be putting these signs right on top of each other, right edge to edge. So we need to account for some spacing while we're doing this. If you look down here, it says part spacing. So we can go here and a good rule of thumb, depending on the thickness of the material you're cutting and how much it warps, um, if you're doing something sixteenth of an inch or uh, depending on, you just basically got to understand your machine and understand the material that you're cutting and how it reacts to the heat but normally a good rule of thumb is you want at least a quarter of an inch in between parts um, and you can bring them a little bit closer as you get thicker but you probably don't want to go anything cl anything closer than um, 0.2 so I'm gonna go ahead and put 0.25 so keep it at a quarter inch and I'll just put this for the sake of um, have it, I'm going to put 0.25 for my Y direction too. Now if you remember, our X direction is your 4 foot span and our Y direction is our 8 foot span. 
So this is basically saying that if we were to have two columns of this part, we would have a quarter inch gap in between them right here, and then the next part would be laid over here. Um, our Y, we have a quarter inch, so that's vertically. We would have a quarter inch gap here, and then our next part would be laid above it. So we're going to go ahead and click Fit to Part again, and it looks like even with a quarter inch gap, we can still get seven pieces out of it. So if we just select OK, it's going to go ahead and like put all those signs and stack them up there. So if you notice, you can count them out. We got seven signs here, and all it does is repeat the cut path. So you don't have to go and design a cut path for every part. You just do it for one, nest the file. Um, so now, say I wanted to put two different parts in here. Um, we're going to go ahead and let's go back. When we go back, it brings us back here to our first nested file. Now we just undid the nesting. So let's say I wanted to nest it a few of these, and then maybe I need three of them. So let's go to array parts. Let's go number of columns, one, number of rows. Let's do three. And we have our spacing, so let's click OK. If you zoom out, you notice we have three parts there. Now say I want to go ahead and bring another part into this file. Let's go ahead and click File and we're going to click new part and we click that it's going to say do you want to import a drawing into this part we're going to select yes and when we select yes now we can go and retrieve one now let's pull a file here personal cuts let's go ahead and pull sample one okay we're going to, it's going to ask us the same things it normally asks us when we import a file um, our scaling so we want inches and we want it at our bottom Actually, let's go ahead and put this piece to our bottom top, just so we don't have to try to select over this. So now if we scroll out, we see it put it up at the top corner. So now obviously we don't want to have the torch run all the way up here, cut this little piece. We want to keep it as close as possible, or better yet, we want to put it down in this available space here. So remember, I know it sounds silly to bring this up, but um, you don't want to bring in parts to the same piece unless you're going to go ahead and cut them out of the same thickness of material. If you drop a full four foot by eight foot sheet here, that's quarter inch thick. Make sure you only bring in quarter inch parts that you want to cut. Um, so in order to move and drag this piece, we want to make sure nesting is selected and we can hover over it and hold down and we get this little finger. Oh and we can drag it and move it. So we can move that down here. Yeah, we can bring it right up to that if we want. We can get it. When we get closer, we can get a better grab on it too. Oh, oh that's good. That brings us pretty, pretty close there. So let's go ahead and create a toolpath for this file. Now how we do that is remember we can't create any operations while we are in our nesting mode. So let's go ahead and go back to our cursor mode. If you notice, we want to go and select sample 1. Oh, let's go to contours. Make sure these, I believe, should have brought this through, so let's go ahead and give it a try. It should have brought this file through as um, the default in SheetCam, putting our red outside layer and our yellow inside. Yep, we could select off screen, we see it. So it did that automatically for us. So let's go ahead and generate a toolpath for this part. We click, we're selected up here, if you can see it in sample. We go ahead and click our operation. We're cutting out of the same thickness, so Point, uh, one, two, which is our 10 gauge setting. We're going to go ahead and click outside offset. We're going to go ahead and click layered contour. All right, and then down here, we're going to go ahead and do arc in and click OK. And there you go, it generates it. And like we demonstrated before in previous videos, if you want to go ahead and put a different lead in for your circle, you can go ahead and do that by adding another operation. Going up to 
oh, actually select that. You got to change the contour first. So we're going to go ahead and change our layer. Right click, move to layer, new layer, enter. If we call that enter. I do that so it reminds me to set an inside offset on it. Click operation. I'm going to go ahead and select inside offset. We're going to select inner layer and we're going to do perpendicular and I believe that is an inch and a half circle so let's do 0.75 which is half of the circle click OK there it is that is how we would do it and don't forget to drag that to the top to cut the inside first outside second and that is how you would import another part alrighty thanks for watching this is Quickman's Metalworks and we hope you enjoy your CNC plasma table.